Amateur night opens with Guy Carter, an unemployed architect struggling to make ends meet, leaving several voicemail messages to Rob, who he met a few weeks back to interview for a job. At the interview, Rob told Guy that he was the perfect candidate for the job, and Rob promised to call him back, but apparently Rob didn't call back. Guy gets so annoyed and decides to leave a last voicemail where he goes on to insult Rob for ghosting him this past month. While leaving the message, Rob picks up the phone and tells Guy that he was fired from his job, which is the reason why he did not call Guy back after which Rob drops the call. And once again, Guy is back to square one, and Guy's wife comes to console him and at the same time tell him that their health insurance might not not cover the birth of their baby unless she gives birth before the insurance expires. This news leaves Guy even more sad with himself, with bills piling up, his wife and finds a job posting on Craigslist for a driver and she writes out the number on the advert and gives it to Guy. Guy calls the number and Zoli picks up. Zoli asks Guy if he has a car and if the car runs, and Guy answers positively to both questions. Zoli then tells Guy to meet him at a pizza spot. Guy then goes for the interview expecting to be a pizza driver but, in a sudden turn of events, Guy finds himself as a chauffeur for a prostitute named Nikki and Guy is expected to start right then and there. Guy drives down to the address given to him by Zoli to pick up Nikki. Guy walks to Nikki's door and meets her at the door, waiting with her luggage. Nikki complains of Guy's lateness and they both walk to the car with Guy carrying her bags. Nikki tells Guy that their first stop would be a regular of hers, a kinky doctor in Bel Air. Nikki asks Guy if he is carrying a weapon or knows how to fight, but Guy explains that he is an architect and not a security personnel. They arrive at the doctor's house and both walk to the front door. Nikki knocks and the doctor answers the door. Nikki tells Guy to wait in the car for her explaining that she would only be in the house for an hour. After a few minutes, Guy decides to leave and head home. On his way, he calls his wife and explains the nature of the job he got. He tells his wife about Nikki and she asks where he is and he tells her he is almost at the house and tells him he cannot abandon Nikki at the doctor's house. She convinces him to go back for her and Guy turns the car around to go pick Nikki. Guy gets back to the doctor's house and Nikki still hasn't come out and she's already running 20 minutes late. Guy calls Zoli to explain the situation and Zoli tells Guy that Nikki is never late. Zoli tells Guy that he has to go in and check what is happening. After dropping the call, Guy decides to break into the house. He finds Nikki in a compromising bondage position and thinks that the doctor is torturing Nikki. Guy tries to rescue Nikki by spraying the doctor's eyes with air freshener. Guy and Nikki then flee from the scene after the doctor falls from the bed to the ground and hits his head but that is after Nikki takes her payment from the doctor's wallet, claiming that she only took half of the usual payment due to what happened. Guy is very horrified by the occurrence but Nikki finds a way to calm him down. Nikki then informs him about the duties and benefits that come with the job and that he gets a 20% cut of the fee they charge their clients. The money involved then prompts Guy to be very much interested in the job. They then proceed to pick up two other prostitutes, Jaxie and Fallon, for a bachelor party. At the house, Nikki introduces Guy to the ladies as the new driver, but the girls are not so happy about the situation claiming that bringing in a new guy at that point is very dangerous. Nikki issues them that Guy is very committed to their mission and to prove his commitment. Guy is ordered to wash the hardware, which is referring to a large bag filled with very messy vibrating cell phones the girls used at their last outing. Guy and the three ladies then head to a fancy hotel in Beverly Hills for the bachelor party. The party is filled with overexcited, testosterone-driven former frat boys. The girls then appoint Guy to play pimp to get the frat boys in line. Guy tells the girls he will not be able to do what they ask. Guy then volunteers to pay for their taxi back to their destination because he wants to leave immediately. Nikki then advises him to use the bathroom before leaving since he will be driving for long. Guy enters the bathroom and Nikki comes in minutes later. Nikki tries to convince him to do the job but Guy is not budging. Nikki then takes Guy's phone and kisses Guy while taking pictures. Nikki threatens to send the pictures to his wife if he fails to comply. Afraid of his wife leaving him and also considering her pregnancy date, Guy accepts to do their bidding. Nikki hands him the rule book and tells him to read it to the frat boys before the show begins. Guy then read the rules to the frat boys and then call on the girls to start the show. What follows is various strip teases and sexually explicit dancing, while the frat boys were busy spraying money and enjoying the show. Guy then gets a phone call from his wife claiming she is in labor. Guy is surprised because she should not be due for another three weeks. Guy explains the situation to Nikki and she allows him to go on the agreement that he would not be paid. Guy drives to the hospital and meets his wife on a drip. The doctor explains that his wife was in false labor, which is a common thing in pregnancies. The doctor then discharged and after completing the drip collection, and leaves the hospital in her own car while Guy goes to drink water before leaving the hospital. At the point of drinking, someone walks up to him and it happens to be the kinky doctor he and Nikki escape from after spraying the doctor's eyes and the doctor hit his head. Guy runs away from the doctor as fast as he can, while hiding from the doctor. The doctor grabs Guy from the back and threatens to paralyze Guy by injecting him unless Guy takes him to Nikki. They both enter Guy's car and drive back to the hotel where the girls are having a show. Getting there, Nikki was able to maneuver the doctor's hands and the doctor injects himself instead, rendering him paralyzed. Nikki then asks Guy if he wants his old job back and Guy accepts since he is already there. 
Once again, Guy announces to the frat boys that the next show will be a girl-on-girl -girl match and it will cost them money to watch. The frat boys bring out some money and Guy calls out the girls to perform their routines, which includes a main event, involving Fallon releasing mayonnaise directly on Guy. The bachelor party then continues at full speed but comes to a halt when the girls find themselves robbed. The girls then hold the entire bachelor party at gunpoint, demanding the return of their money. Nikki asks Guy to search each of the guys. Guy finds the culprit but he made the run for it. They chase the culprit down the long hall. After catching up with him, the girls end up urinating on him before taking back their money. After they leave the hotel, one of the bachelor party guy approaches Nikki and hands her panties which he claims he found under the couch. He then tells Nikki he has 200 bucks in his pocket and asks for a quickie. Nikki then follows him to his car while Guy and the other two ladies wait in Guy's car. After some minutes, Nikki is being handcuffed by the man who is then revealed to be an undercover cop and he attempts to arrest Nikki. This prompts Guy to once again rescue Nikki by reversing the car to where Nikki is standing. The girls open the door and Nikki jumps in while Guy drives away quickly, which makes them get caught in a cop car chase. The four of them manage to escape the cops but end up crashing Guy's car. They get down from the car and run through the highway. They continue to escape on a passenger bus. They get into a taxi to drive them home. The taxi drops off Jaxie and Fallon first. Jaxie thanks Guy for everything he did that day and tells him he is free to drive her anytime and any day. Guy and Nikki get back into the taxi and the taxi heads for Nikki's house. When they arrive at Nikki's place, Guy helps Nikki with her bags. Nikki invites him in claiming she has something to show him. Nikki brings out a file inside which is a picture of the land she owns. Nikki tells Guy that she wants him to help with building a house on the land to which Guy replies that it will be very expensive and Nikki explains that she has been saving for the past 11 years which will enable her to afford anything. Nikki then gives Guy the contact of her lawyer, just in case the police come knocking, telling him to tell the lawyer that he is referred to her by Patricia. Then Guy learns that Nikki's real name is Patricia Cornbluth. The next morning, a taxi drops Guy at home. He tries looking around to see if the police are around to arrest him. He goes into the house and meets his wife sleeping. He apologizes for not following her home the previous day. He then promises to tell her everything when she asks what he did to get the kind of cash he brought home. Guy expects cops to be at his house but it turns out his car was found by repo men and hauled away before the cops could find it. This was such an oddball comedy, but I enjoyed it for what it was what did you guys think of this one? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like, it really helps the channel. Bye.